you better behave yourselves and say, better walk out of here. And, you know, they started singing because there was a lot of wine and beer. And, you know, they sang old songs about, you know, America's, you know, great triumphs. And this was America's first great triumph in the Philippines. There's a book about that. And they started singing about, damn, damn the Philippines. You know, get the crowd, shoot them, because they'll steal your, they'll steal your, uh, your uh, food. And you know, and as they were singing, they were pounding the table. And I, sat, I, I stood up, I missed all the clatter noise, and I looked at everybody, and the noise went down. And Admiral Carl Trokes, four star Admiral, came over and he said, Admiral, you and I know one another. I don't think you should be singing that song anywhere in the world. And I will not let you sing that song without looking at your people deep in, the, in your eyes. Because we did not steal silly play. It's still there. And it's bully. One year later, I hope I can find it in my documentations. I'm on drugs right by letter, and he showed me the songbook, and they took out all the sarcastic Bible songs in that affair. You all want that affair. I don't I'm not, I'm not trying to show, show up here. It's just that people are people. They're no different from us. We have our own biases, and they have their own biases. But eventually, if we stand our ground firmly and show our integrity and our hard work, the Filipino will always be respected. That is what I'm proud of. And the respect came from the fact that we worked hard. Not, we did not say, how many times have we heard me say, acta, non verba, action, not words. And that is what Subic is all about today. I can tell you a million times. You know, my book has been completed since 2009. Many of you are there in that book, but I have not published it. I didn't want to publish it when I was about to run for the presidency of the country. Sitting there, it says in the computer. And I'm still redoing the book over and over again in my mind. And it will never be finished, I suppose. Yesterday I came across a song thinking about civic pain. I suppose it's a song about spurred lover. And I'm trying to remember what I liked about that song. She was saying, she was saying I, I, I want to forget you, but I can't forget you. But one of the phrases in the song goes like this. I can't burn the bridges that I'm still crossing. I'm still crossing the bridge, and that's why I can't burn it. I can't forget the past because I'm still lost in it. That's exactly how I feel about the country. This country cannot burn its bridges because we still have to build bridges to make sure that the infrastructure of this country grows and should be made. That's what we inherited here, and that's why we took good care of it. We built, we built that airport and got FedEx, and we made this the hub of FedEx in the whole world. But of course, we did not follow up. We got Bikashi twice in the bid. And what one? Can't help it, there are deaths home in political contests. So the president did not allow us to award it to Bikashi. Even if it was going to happen at the time when Hong Kong was going to be vacated by the British, and Nick Ashley wanted to hedge his bets and come to Sudan Bay and was going to build all the planes. Of course, he was going to have a lower tariff for the containers, but that wasn't good enough, and we lost it. My father always chastised me when I say, Sana, Sana, Sana means. If we had done it, if this thing had happened, or what we wanted it to be, and he says, 
in our family, you don't say, Sana, Kong, Akana, Kong, Kasi, you do not fix the blame, you fix the problem. Well, we lost that. But still, Subic still up on its feet today. I want to uh, say how happy I am that uh, Abby Aisma is back here. Yes, I did make a recommendation for Ami. And I don't want to say that out very often because, you know, when I say that, she will be a marked person. And I rarely say that because I am responsible for the people I recommend. And I rarely recommend. I sit on the board of the Judicial Bar Council and we recommend judges to the president to become justices of the Supreme Court and the Supreme Bar. And I'm always very careful about the people I nominate and I recommend. I'm happy that Amy is now both chairman and administrator as it should be. And I'm only saying this to put pressure on Amy. All the young people here, they know that I always put pressure upon them. I always make it harder for them and when they do something, I will lift the bar higher and aim higher again. And even if they get what the goal is, what goal there was, we would raise the bar again and again and again. We had the best fire department in the entire country. We had the best security force in the entire country. We had the best volunteers in the entire country. We put in the regional science high school. I saw Mayor Nepomuceno here, a Mayor uh, of Castellanos here, Dominguez. And he said, my son is now going to study at the regional science high school. And I said, we worked very hard to get it here. Because at that time, they only had another section in Alamo. And when we got that opportunity, this became the regional science high school. And I can tell you, many of our children in Batan, in Pampanga, they have graduated from that school. And they're not doctors, they're not engineers. It's my hope that they will come back and do something for their country. And that is the way life must be. You know, I, I always say that life must be like a campaign. And I said this the other day in the Senate. I was telling the military. I was telling uh, Senator Knoxon, who is sponsoring the budget of the military. And I said, you know, we keep talking about the Abu Sayyaf having 300 people, 400 people for the last 20 years. And we never can defeat them. And I said, you know why? Because we never put our hearts and minds into it. It is not a campaign. What do you do? It's a flash at the pan, attack, and sometimes when they're all already about to win, they will be told by somebody, say stop, we're being pressured by Libya, we're being pressured by somebody else. As I said, take a look at your Roman history. Take a look at all the great campaigns. They call it campaigns. All the great wars had campaigns in their battlegrounds. You know, campaign against the Visigoths, the campaign against the Germans, the campaign in the Ardennes. World War II was a campaign. So there was always a Ulysses motion to finish the job. And I said, and I'm glad General Reyes is here, even the budget of the military is not a campaign. BCDA was created so that they would have money for the military to mobilize. So, I say, if a great country, our neighbor comes in with their ships, we're a fifth creek nation. We don't have any bottoms to go there, we'll have to cry uncle. Finland wasn't like that. Finland gave Russia a bloody nose. And they had that campaign, and they won that campaign. And so I said, we must campaign to get the budget of the military so that we get the small patrol craft in many more islands needed to interdict drugs, interdict piracy. And so I said, we will campaign to make sure that we have an air force. Have an air force that is all air and no force. Or a navy that's all coast and no guard. But the real campaign to get the funding. And I'm still doing that at the moment. 
tackle the budget next week again, and we'll try to get that campaign started. Not five billion. Then I found out you have 25 billion that was not being spent yet from the previous time. So I said, if the military does as well, for as much as I propound that we must get the budget of the military increased. I will investigate the military if they cannot spend that money. Because that is supreme negligence. Because you are putting our country in danger. So too for Subic Bay. The campaign goes on. The race goes on. Every time there is a new chairman, it's not a task force. A campaign goes on because the soldiers, the volunteers, the staff, Everybody in this country must put that in their heart that there is a campaign to win the future for this country. And if we do not put that in our hearts, and that's why it, it makes me, my heart, sore like an eagle. I used to say sore like a hawk, but after the win, I have to go against FPU the other day. You know, it was a good feeling, right? Um, you know, that's the kind of uh, attitude we must have. Never say that. We will be sent back. We will have disagreements. Tom and I had our disagreements. But we all wanted the same thing. We got the brand new Subi Bay every time we come in. Every chairman tries to do that. But it's always good to hearken and say, what is the common cause? What is the common good? What are we campaigning for? So that once the people see the vision, as the Bible goes, where there is no vision, people perish. We must have a people that must know where we're going, not just know how, but to where we're going. And so today, I've spoken long enough, that's the trouble when you don't have a prepared text. But it's no trouble for me. I tried to hit you with all kinds of shibboleths. And I tried to flagellate myself with the wannabes, or the one I want to be for my country, and what you want to be for your country. And the only thing I'm leaving with here is this. No matter who's in charge, no matter who's president, every Filipino, every soldier,